Hello, my name is George Mwika Kayange. I'm the Director of Programs at Southern Africa Federation of the Disabled. Um, today, I'm going to give a presentation on what uh, Safford uh, is doing in response to the COVID-19 pandemic uh, in Southern Africa. But before I, I do that, um, let me just quickly give you a, a, a quick overview uh, of what Safford is all about. The Southern Africa Federation of the Disabled is an umbrella network of national federations of, dis uh, of disabled people's organizations, or what we call DP DPOs, uh, in Southern Africa. Uh, our office is in Botswana, and uh, currently we, off we officially uh, work in 10 countries in the region uh, as of 2 December 2020 but we are looking to um, expand our constituency to all the 16 countries uh, in Southern Africa. Uh, currently, some of the countries that we work in uh, include Angola, Botswana, uh, Iswatini, Lesotho, Malawi, Mozambique, Namibia, South Africa, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. Uh, in each of these countries, we coordinate our programs and activities through uh, the affiliates uh, or the federations that are affiliated to uh, to support. Now, what has been the impact uh, of COVID-19 uh, 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 in the region? Um, as we all know, uh, coronavirus uh, disease is an infectious disease uh, that is caused by a newly discovered uh, coronavirus, uh, and it started in China um, just just uh, a year ago, and. Um, COVID is affecting everyone, uh, directly or indirectly, uh, and it's affecting the health and socioeconomic status of people, um, both in developed uh, as well as in developing countries. But why are we uh, more interested uh, uh, in, in, in targeting persons with disabilities? Um, as you know, Persons with disabilities uh, are not spared uh, from the pandemic. Uh, they generally have more health care needs than, than others. Um, a lot of research uh, has confirmed this, and uh, their needs are both standard and linked to impairments. Uh, so that is, that's what makes uh, persons with disabilities unique, because um, their needs are, are very much linked to their impairments. Uh, they are therefore more vulnerable to the social impact brought by, uh, by COVID-19 uh, on the basis that there are, uh, there are lots of low quality and, and, and not accessible healthcare services uh, compared to the health services that are targeted for persons without disabilities. And as you know, they also uh, face social attitudes uh, that are characterized by, um, by stigma and discrimination, and um, there is also low participation of persons with disabilities, uh, which leads to policies that are not inclusive uh, of their needs. So all those factors combined uh, contribute to the vulnerability that we see uh, in persons with disabilities. Now, how is Safford um, responding? In response, Safford is responding in the following ways. Number one, we have drafted the COVID-19 response strategy for persons with disabilities in Southern Africa. And we've also been conducting an online survey to collect data from persons with disabilities related to COVID-19. Um, thirdly, we have organized uh, a virtual capacity building training or workshop on COVID-19 for our national um, affiliates. Fourthly, we are um, uh, in the process of developing an online portal uh, on COVID-19 for persons with disabilities. And finally, we are preparing to launch uh, very soon uh, a competition for artists and craftspeople with disabilities to showcase their artistic work uh, on COVID-19. So those are some of the ways uh, in which 
uh, uh, Southern Africa Federation of the Disabled is responding uh, to the pandemic uh, currently. Let me talk about um, the uh, let me talk about the the, the response uh, strategy uh, on COVID. Um, we have developed a COVID-19 response strategy. Um, um, we started this process uh, way back in April, uh, and currently uh, the strategy is is focusing on uh, on the uh, on April to December uh, period. But this is something that we are. Uh, we reviewing uh, and shortly we'll be releasing um, uh, uh, a new response strategy uh, effective from from January uh, 2021. So the response um, um, strategy um, is uh, uh, proposes a list of interventions targeting persons with disabilities and their carers, and the main goal is to support SAFOD's national affiliates, not just. Uh, uh, national affiliates, but also key stakeholders uh, in developing effective and inclusive national response strategies. So basically, we focus on interventions that are focused uh, on um, on reducing infection uh, and impact of COVID-19 among persons with disabilities uh, in the region. Um, also, we seek to engage and influence SADC and its member states to integrate disability inclusive national responsive plans uh, on COVID-19. We seek to increase awareness through sensitization and capacity building of different stakeholders, not just our, our affiliates. And um, we also uh, seek to advocate uh, for mainstreaming of disability into health services uh, and other programs. Uh, uh, thereby ensuring increased access to quality health services related to COVID-19 uh, by persons with disabilities. We also seek to increase and diversify uh, the funding for implementation of the response strategy uh, through fundraising and strategic partnerships with various uh, stakeholders. Let me emphasize that uh, this is a living document. Um, therefore, we are designing practical interventions that are going to be consistently updated uh, with information uh, that's being uh, gathered uh, on the ground. We have uh, included a link um, that uh, people can use to access uh, this uh, strategy. And then, um, having uh, spoken about the strategy, uh, let me also uh, talk about the online survey that we've been conducting uh, using the Survey Monkey uh, to, to collect uh, uh, data. Um, so basically, uh, since April, uh, we have been collecting data uh, from persons with disabilities um, uh, in all the countries that, that, that we work in, and not just the 10 countries, but uh, the whole Southern Africa um, region uh, using the Survey Monkey, um, uh, the online platform that helps collect data. So, um, why, are we, why, why, why are we doing this? Um, we are doing this because we realize uh, that this is uh, a new phenomenon, uh, a new phenomenon. Um, you will realize that uh, uh, you, you will recognize that COVID-19 is, 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 is something which is new and uh, we are always learning about it. So for us to come up with an effective uh, a strategy, response strategy, we need to collect uh, as much data as we can um, from persons with disabilities that can help us um, uh, develop uh, 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 effective strategies. So we want to understand how COVID-19 is affecting persons with disabilities uh, and then secondly um, we want to understand how um, how they feel about the ongoing response interventions at the local community uh, at the national level and even at nation uh, at the regional uh, levels um, by doing this then we hope that the data that we collect will inform SAFOD's own regional response strategies that I spoke about earlier
Again, uh, through the, um, the online survey, uh, we seek to generate and utilize already existing knowledge, evidence, and data from uh, research studies, uh, case studies, uh, or, or good practices uh, related to inclusive responses against uh, COVID-19. The data generated will, uh, will enhance shared learning, uh, disability programming, monitoring and evaluation. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, the survey can be accessed uh, online and um, uh, an initial report, uh, just a snapshot of some of the findings that uh, we've been able to generate can also be accessed uh, online. Another area that I spoke about earlier is the capacity building uh, uh, program for our, uh, our affiliates and other uh, uh, stakeholders. So um, uh, recently we, we, we held a, a, a workshop um, where we were training our affiliates uh, on COVID-19 and um, uh, this was a virtual uh, training um, uh, that took uh, that took place uh, in October and um, um, this training took place on 12 and 13 October 2020 um, and uh, it was aimed at equipping uh, suffered member federations with necessary skills to be inclusive on carrying out COVID-19 interventions. The workshop uh, basically focused on the concepts of universal design and uh, reasonable accommodation, uh, explaining where the uh, CRPD already protects rights uh, that are relevant to COVID-19. So um, basically, um, like I mentioned earlier, there were the, the participants from all the 10 countries uh, uh, where we work and uh, this workshop was being facilitated by one of the disability activists uh, who is based here uh, in, in, in Botswana. Apart uh, from capacity uh, building program, uh, we are also uh, in, uh, implementing, we are also developing a, a, a portal, a, 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 an online portal on COVID-19. So um, this is uh, uh, this is this is a portal uh, on COVID-19 for persons with disabilities, uh, which seeks uh, which seeks to maintain an interactive web-based um, or, 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 or mobile platform platform, um, which will feature inclusive materials and information on COVID-19 um, that respond to the needs of persons with disabilities. It will also include awareness raising materials and testimonies on COVID-19 from personal disabilities themselves. So um, when completed, the portal will be accessed uh, online. There's a, 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 a website link uh, that we are sharing um, uh, with, uh, with stakeholders. Finally, um, another, uh, another area that uh, we are also focusing uh, at Safford is that uh, we are preparing to launch a competition for artists and craftspeople uh, with disabilities to showcase their artistic work uh, on COVID-19. This is to ensure the inclusion of all sectors uh, in this work. So we are targeting task, uh, artists and craftspersons with disabilities uh, as part of the arts and craft project that we are already managing um, between Safford and Loughborough and University as well as Aston University uh, uh, in London. So um, in, in, this, in this intervention we want, uh, we want persons with disabilities, uh, particularly artists and craft people with disabilities to share their experiences by submitting their crafts, uh, as, as uh, their crafts, as well as artistic expressions that depict how COVID-19 is affecting them, or how persons with disabilities in general are being affected. 
So we are looking for creative and artistic uh, expressions that enable people with disabilities to communicate their inner feelings uh, to, the, to the world around them. Works may include paintings, um, sculpting, weaving, uh, needlework, a drama, music, poetry, writing, dance and photography. So uh, basically that is a list of interventions that uh, support uh, is currently doing uh, in response to uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, let me conclude by sharing um, uh, an excerpt uh, from one of the respondents uh, in the survey that we've been uh, conducting online um, who said that uh, persons with disabilities need to be involved in planning of COVID-19 um, intervention, uh, interventions and strategies. Issues of disabilities need to be taken with the seriousness uh, that, de that, that, de that they deserve uh, at all levels. So um, that's the end uh, of my presentation. Uh, thank you so much uh, for listening and uh, we hope that uh, different stakeholders uh, that are listening to, to this presentation will also be interested to join the effort that SAFOD is currently doing uh, to ensure that uh, the needs of persons with disabilities uh, is included uh, in the response strategies at the regional level uh, in Southern Africa. Thank you so much.